Hey guys, Barry, SeaTech Review. Gonna do a little footage today, 2017 Ford Raptor. Here we go. Start, stop, it's cool. <laughs> Chicks dig it. If this place, the way you fired. 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 Hey guys, just wanted to do an update today. Um, had the truck about three months now. Got a little over 4,000 miles. I'd say it's probably broken or as close as it's going to be. Uh, we've definitely put it through its paces. It's been to Silver Lake Off-Road Park now about probably five different times. It's definitely had all four tires off the ground a handful of times too. Uh, very impressed with what this thing can do and haven't had any issues actually the only issue we had that's still uh, outstanding is the uh, dealership mistake that they made when they, they damaged a few interior pieces on my trim but they say they're going to take care of this so looking forward to getting that repair uh, they're they're being pretty cool they, they acknowledge that they made the mistake and they're gonna step up to the plate I believe but I'm gonna keep everyone updated regardless of um, uh, of the situation but today just doing a follow-up gonna talk about a few different things uh, kind of talk about the trucks performance uh, really impressed overall with the seats in this this is probably the nicest Ford seats of any vehicle I've had I've had probably 15 to 20 different Ford trucks and almost that many in cars um, these seats are very comfortable we spent six hours in a day driving um, uh, to different off-road parks and then spending six to ten hours in the vehicle um, actually in off-road conditions and the uh, n neither me or Robert or anyone else our backs were hurt or sore as we uh, as we came home so I definitely got to give a shout to uh, Ford for how well the um, how well the interior is laid out as far as comfort and the seats and everything the only thing I would note is that I'm still struggling with getting used to the ergonomics of this truck. Um, I've had a lot of F-150s, F-250s, F-350s, and other half-ton trucks, and I came from a 2016 Dodge Ram 1500 before this, so I was very comfortable with the interior on that truck. That was my second latest generation Ram. Uh, very happy with kind of how all the buttons and everything was laid out, so I'm still getting used to the reach for the windshield or I'm sorry for the uh, window openers and some of the different controls for the HVACs a little farther than I'm used to and I'm not sure if that's just because the Ford has got so much more interior space that things are farther away but uh, that, I'm getting used to that regardless um, you might have just heard a stone fly a second ago I live on a dirt road and it's one of the reasons why I have mud flaps that I put on from rock blocks which was because um, I live on a dirt road, so I want to try to protect the paint finish and, and things of that nature. Um, what you're probably hearing are stones coming off the KO2s, the BFG KO2 tires, and kicking up on the factory running boards. Uh, the rock blocks eliminated, I'd say, at least 80 to 90% of the, the debris and rocks and stones and mud that come off the stock tires um, and got on the door handles and the side of the truck and whatnot. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised how much debris actually comes off the stock tires and stock width and offset for the um, for the factory setup. It's almost a necessity if you live in any kind of roads that have loose stone or dirt road. You're going to want some kind of off-road protection to keep your fit, your paint looking nice. And I've had these uh, I put these mud flaps through the uh, some off-road uh, abuse, and they're still holding up awesome. Very happy with it. Um, as far as modifications, I, I know I talked about it in a few other videos, but I've done, at this point, I've done three things. I installed uh, two 15-inch LED light bars underneath the grill up front. Real happy with them. I have a video, actually, separate that you can uh, check those out 
and uh, we'll have some footage in this as well to discuss that. I've got them both uh, wired up in AUX1 and AUX2. A little bit of overkill, probably could have got it on AUX1 given the wattage, or the amperage, sorry, of the total amount of uh, amperage for the two combined, but I thought it'd be kind of cool when people get in here to flick AUX1 and AUX2. And then I got AUX6 set up for my two rear LEDs combined into AUX6, and that's just a low, I think it's a five amp AUX switch, so that's why I set that up. So right now I've got AUX3, 4, and 5 open to what other lights and other accessories I want to use. Um, also, uh, let's see, uh, the RPG one and a half inch coil spacer up front, looked at a few of the different options in the market with that and decided to go with that option because um, I think RPG makes pretty good products and I know they've been around for a while. I think some of the other coil spacer kits are really nice also. It's just I didn't really see the need for adjustability and RPG kind of had a proven product for the money. Installation, honestly, is really easy. One thing to keep in mind, the lower shock bolt is torqued to 406 foot-pounds. So something to keep in mind, you're gonna want to uh, consider to have a really strong impact uh, to take that off or a, or a huge braking bar, which is the option I chose because my impact wasn't strong enough. Right now with the one and a half inch RPG coil spacer up front, um, I've got three quarters of an inch rake more in the rear than in the front. So that actually works out pretty nice. When I load it up with a few dirt bikes, the truck sits perfectly level. Um, and I was also concerned with the three inch that maybe I lose a little bit of the um, handling or maybe get a little less of a soft ride because the truck rides amazing for what it is. It, it really does ride awesome, even in rough chop. Oh, another thing I did, I figure I'd just mention, um, I did plastic dip the wheels. I did that because I wanted to see more or less what the look would look like with black rims on the truck. I wasn't a big fan of the look of the 2017 um, factory bad bead locks. Just, I don't know, I just didn't, I like the color, but I just didn't like the design. I actually like the look of the original Gen 1 bead locks better. I'm really curious to see what Gen 1 bead locks would look like on a 2017. I'm considering picking up a set and uh, putting it on. But I really wanted to, at some point, powder coat either a charcoal or a dark black, uh, the factory rims, but to get an idea, uh, we have some footage showing what the rim looks like on the Avalanche Gray, and I think it matches and contrasts really nicely. And surprisingly, given the you know off-road abuse, not even abuse, but just the use that we've put it through, the plastic dip's surprisingly holding up well. The next thing probably on the list is looking at a few different tuning options right now. Uh, I know Five Star Tuning actually has a, uh, a tune that is coming out pretty soon. Um, looking at that option and then uh, Ford Performance and Roush also have a product coming out uh, so that's going to be a really good option. Not really interested in a cold air intake at this time but we'll see maybe somebody will come out with something that's that's telling of, uh, of the performance. Overall couldn't be more than pleased with uh, with the truck. Fuel mileage wise um, I'm averaging right now Right at the moment, I've got about 15 miles in this tank and it's been all city driving and I'm averaging 13.2. But if I look over the last 1,800 miles to the dot, see if you can zoom in here, I'm actually at 13.6. That includes all my days of being at Silver Lake. So we're talking five, eight hour days of being in the dunes and you know, you're full throttle, a lot of you're just on it. You're getting really terrible fuel mileage. So I was pretty impressed that it's actually getting that good of fuel mileage. I've ran 91 to 93 octane every tank except two, and I did 87 octane because I was doing a lot of highway driving, and it was, you know, I figured I could save 20 bucks a tank if I went with some uh, 87 octane. And I really couldn't notice any difference in performance, maybe slightly, um, but. What I did notice, and it's probably just coincidence, it's probably not actual uh, anything to do with the 87 octane, but right around the 3,500 mile mark, I did notice that um, my fuel mileage seemed to pick up a little bit. It's, it's better than one mile per gallon. And I don't know if this is like the break-ins complete, or if this is the 87 octane, or maybe the temperature's changing, but I have noticed in the past 500 miles or so, that the fuel mileage has actually picked up quite drastically. Um, 
so I'm definitely happy about that. Um, overall, you know, some people don't like to start stop me. I like it. I, I'm used to it now. You come to a stoplight, the engine shuts off. Um, I don't know. There's just no vibration you feel in the vehicle. It's just kind of, kind of, kind of pleasant when you're at a stoplight. One note: last weekend, actually, my wife and I, we took it up north, uh, a few hours north of here, to some recreational off-road trails, and we did like three or four hours worth of off-roading, just some trails, two track in it, anywhere between 30 to 60 mile an hour. And, we were just really impressed at how well this thing performs off-road. And just for a reference, last year, about this time, we were in a 2016 Polaris Razor four-seat turbo, which had a lot more suspension travel than this. And uh, it was a blast, it was fun, but um, we kind of wanted something with more creature comforts, air conditioning, heat, radio, um, and something you could, you know, street legal. On the, you know for a little easier to get on the trails and we were both shocked at how well this thing performed on the same trails we hit last year with the razor I mean it's just it's incredible at the dunes it's amazing on the two track and trails it's incredible um, the terrain modes work awesome uh, we found in the dunes that the under 30 to 40 mile per hour the mud and sand mode seems to work the best and then once you get up to 50, 60, 70 mile an hour, it seemed like the Baja mode seemed a little more appropriate. I've actually, hey, look at that. Black uh, 17 Raptor just went by. Hey, he waved his hand. Uh, so that's kind of funny. The terrain mode seemed to work real well. I, not so much for the trails, but at the dunes, I'm using the paddle shifters constantly. I didn't know if I'd use them. I've had them in vehicles in the past and actually our 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee has them. And I use the paddle shifters on that when I tow because I can lock it out in eighth gear and it'll tow real nice uh, so it's not shifting. We actually locked out some gears when we were at the dunes for off-road to keep it in peak, peak RPMs, not shifting. That was even better than some of the different off-road terrain modes as far as the shifting patterns that's automatically set in there. I haven't had any issues, any hiccups off-road, four-wheel drives engaged and disengaged, rear lockers engaged and disengaged what I wanted, not one problem with the start stop, and I haven't disengaged it at all for city driving. I just, I'm used to it, I like it, it doesn't bother me. I find for general driving, I'm really liking the uh, comfort mode in the steering wheel. It seems to just kind of make things a little less fatiguing. Uh, it's got a little bit of a stiffer uh, steering than my 2016 Ram that I came from. Um, the one feature that I suggest everyone get just for safety and just comfort is awesome is the Raptor technology package. I knew I would like it because I've, I've driven vehicles with adaptive cruise control before and um, brake assist, but what I didn't think I would realize I'd like is the uh, lane keeping and lane assist. That is awesome. If you're uh, driving a lot on the highway like I am, a lot of, a lot of nighttime driving, long trips, um, having that feature let alone could uh you know keeps things safer could save your life or some accident or anything of that nature collision mitigation works really well um the only time i typically turn off the lane keeping and lane assist is if i'm on roads that are real twisty and maybe i'm not being the best driver and getting a little sloppy in the steering wheel and crossing over here and there um, i'll turn it off because it's constantly trying to fight you but overall, that, that package is awesome. Really impressed with that. And everybody, you know, no one wants to admit it, but everyone's more busy driving in cars now with your cell phones. And it's just, you, you get preoccupied with the technology available to you. And it's really nice having some of these features that when you're, when you're going to your off-road parks and using the truck for what it's designed to get there safely. And I really, I really like that option. I, for any vehicle I purchase here on out, I, I definitely want that option. Overall, Love the truck, really impressed with what it does off-road, really impressed at how it drives on-road. 4,000 miles on the on the truck now, the tires, I'm not noticing any uh, extra road noise. I mean, you're probably not picking up a whole lot of road noise now. Um, don't have any complaints. Uh, I'm really getting used to the exhaust tone when you get on and it does have a nice throaty burble and I'm gonna be posting some videos of some GoPro footage that we specifically mounted a GoPro on between the dual exit exhaust and right underneath the uh, rear facing camera. So you guys will be able to hear the exhaust. It doesn't sound bad. 
I mean, it is quiet, so if you're used to a big throaty V8, there's no doubt about it, it's, it's a change, it's different. But they could have did a whole lot worse in designing the exhaust. They did a great job, it's got a good tone. And I don't know if I would want a louder exhaust because it's real nice and quiet when you want it quiet. But if you get on it, like right now, I mean, it sounds nice. And I mean, granted, I know that there is a little bit of the, uh, uh, you know, they pipe a little bit of the exhaust note into the speakers. I get that, but they did such a great job that I'm actually impressed with how well it all works. I think if you decide to purchase one, um, you're gonna be really happy. And another thing I'm really pumped about is they just heard for 2018 that Ford is not gonna be doing the Avalanche Gray, so I'm kinda of excited the little bit of the exclusivity to the color there. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate your guys' uh, support and subscription to watch my channel. I'm gonna have a lot more reviews coming in the future uh, of the truck and some of the uh, upgrades we're doing and just any quirks or any issues. You know, I wanna be honest and real with everyone. That's kind of the idea here. And, uh, you know, by me lying to you, I don't work for a Ford dealership. I don't work for Ford. I work, I, this is just a hobby of mine. And I want you to have a real perspective of someone that's wanted a Raptor for eight years and finally got one so I can uh, help anyone else make an educated purchase. Thanks again and thanks for watching C-Tech Review.